Hello everybody, I'm Paweł Fertyk from Miskatonic Studio. You might remember me from last year when I talked about Godot Open Adventure Template and from the year before when I presented a game called Intrepid. This year I would like to invite you to Shader Shenanigans, a coding session in which I'm going to show you some nice effects you can achieve with shaders in Godot Engine. So let's dive into it. All right, let's start with UV light, which could be used to show some hidden messages or even hidden objects in your game. So as you can see, I've prepared a very simple scene with a floor just for contrast. And then there are two objects, flat object that can be used to show text, for example, like hidden message on a wall, and a 3D object that can be used to show some more complicated stuff. Uh, there's also a source of light that illuminates the entire scene, but there's also a UV light that we eventually want to have like, bring up this hidden object. So as long as they are not in this light, they are hidden, but when this light is around, they are shown. And let's start with the 2D uh, object. Let's create a shader for it. And I have already prepared uh, an empty file for this uh, here. So as you can see, this shader, uh, has a shader type spatial because we are dealing with 3D objects, even though the object is flat. And we have an emission color and emission energy for the effect, for the UV effect, because as you prob probably know, uh, this does not look like the UV light does not just brings up the object, uh, the, the text or whatever, it makes it look like it's uh, glowing uh, in this light. So in, we are going to make this uh, create an emission effect. And we need a texture uh, that will show like the object, that, uh, the text or any other pattern that we want to bring up here. And for this example, I'm going to use a texture that looks like this, uh, which is just a text. So here in shader params, I'm going to load this texture. And because we are going to deal with light here, we like the more intensive the light is, the more visible the object is going to be. We will have to implement a light shader. But also because the light shader has uh, cannot influence the emission uh, value. So in order to manipulate that, we will have to create a fragment shader. And in fragment shader, we can, oh, uh, we can uh, well, let's first start, start with setting this emission to something colorful and the energy to something greater than zero, just so we can see the results immediately when we implement the shader. So what we have here is uh, we will set the emission value of emission color, that is, to emission color RGB times emission energy. So right now, this should be glowing, and yes, it is glowing, but the, the entire thing is glowing, so this is not exactly what we wanted. So then, let's do a simple trick, because light, as I said, the light shader cannot influence, uh, cannot change the emission, but it can change the alpha value, and it is processed after the fragment shader, so we are going to set the alpha value to 0, 0, 0, 0 right, this is, and that means that right now the shader shows absolutely nothing, but then, inside of the light uh, shader, we are going to change this alpha value into length of attenuation, which is the attenuation itself is a light as a vector, but length of attenuation will be the, st the length of this vector, which is the strength of the light. And we are going to multiply it by uh, the pixels uh, alpha value. So the color of this texture that we had we are using in this example. The color does not matter, it only matters for alpha. Uh, so let's create a pixel here equals texture, which is our text and UV. And then we're going to use pixel A. And yeah, as you can see, still we have nothing shown. And that's because the light shader only works if it has um, uh, a diffuse light or specular light assigned in it. If it's not, a, if none, none of this is assigned, then this shader will simply not be processed. So let's start with assigning something to 
diffuse light, for example, back 3, 0, 0.0. And now this shader is processed, and now you can see that in a fragment shader, we set the emission to our color and multiply by energy. Then we set alpha to zero, and then whenever this light illuminates uh, this object, the alpha is uh, brought back to more than zero, so the object is visible. And you can see that if I grab this light and I move it around, well, nothing happens. But oh, the, here you can see that uh, the, the object fades away, fades away, and then is shown again. And why does it happen? That's because we have two light sources. One is the UV light, and one is the normal light that illuminates the entire scene. So what we want to achieve is for this normal uh, standard light to not illuminate the hidden objects. So in this light settings, the, the main light settings, we will change the car mask to exclude layer number two. And then we are going to grab this object and we will move it to, num to layer number two. And we can immediately do the same for the other object, which is going to be used in the moment. So now if I take this UV light and I move it around, the object fades away, and when it gets out of the range of the light, it still remains hidden. And yeah, you can see that this transition might be a tiny bit abrupt, like this is this almost nothing and then almost full alpha, but you can change the light settings here and then achieve different results. And yeah, that's basically it for the flat object with with a texture defining where the uh, where something should be shown and not uh, using the alpha channel. Uh, and for a three D object, I'm going to also create. Uh, I already have created a material with a shader that is uh, empty. Uh, so I'm just going to grab this two dimensional shader. I'm going to copy it here. It's still going to be special. Uh, special shader, but uh, we are not going to use this uh, this texture because we don't need the texture, we have the geometry here. So I'm going to remove this line and that brings us to this line, where, where do we get the pixel value from? We don't, we just use attenuation, so the closer the light is, the more visible this object is. And now if I grab the light and I move it around, you can see how this object fades away when the light, light moves away. Sorry. You can see, and then disappears entirely. And when I turn off this light, then no objects are shown. So that's how you can do a UV effect for your UV light effect for your game. All right, now let's talk about an outline around 3D objects. Uh, so the, probably the fastest way to do it in Godot is uh, use a vertex shader to scale an object up a bit and then apply a different color to the scaled object to create kind of like a frame around the original. And that is super, like you, you can see th this method in this uh, picture here. And this is super fast to implement, but it's also it also has its limitations. Like for example, here we can see that uh, sometimes the frame is super, the outline is super thin and sometimes it's way, way thicker. There are some problems around the corners. so. In this session, I'm going to show you a different method that will create an effect like this, which is a very consistent outline around the entire object. And this object will have very complicated uh, geometry and the corners will work perfectly. And full disclosure, this is not mine. I have found it on GitHub. I will post uh, a link uh, later. Uh, but let's dive to the coding. Um, so I've created a simple scene that has a 3D object with a complex geometry, as you can see and a single camera and uh, in order to create an outline around this we are going to do the following first we are going to create a viewport container that viewport and like scale it around the entire uh, scene the entire screen sorry create a viewport inside of it and in that i uh, also this is set stretch to true viewport also set uh, size override and transparent background and create a camera inside. And now the trick is that this camera that is inside of this viewport, that is inside of this viewport container, is going to only see layers two or up. You can also restrict it to a single layer, like uh, other than two. But in this example, we are going to use uh, use it like this. So objects on the first layer are not going to be seen by this camera. 
uh, which means that if uh, we going to make to create an outline around something like this object we have to move it to the second layer but we can also keep it still in the first layer and that will be the way to turn the outline on and off so what's happening now is that this camera sees this object and if i uh, turn off the second layer of the object that it, it will not see it so uh, let's go to this viewport uh, viewport container sorry and create a shader material and i've already prepared a simple shader file that is almost empty but i mean uh, we i have a uniform for width of the frame and the color of the frame uh, and the fragment shader that is going to assign a color returned by the create frame method and right now uh, the create frame method can use the texture can use the pixel size and the uv coordinates and right now it returns just a white color and let's see if it works yeah so we can see that basically right now the screen is white so let's spice it up a bit uh, let's read the value of the pixel texture of text and uv and now if this pixel is transparent uh, let's return the pixel it's uh, let us return yeah uh, the pixel itself so return pixel and otherwise let's return a color uh, col color white uh, just like this so return back for 1.0 so what is going to happen now is that if this, because uh, as you remember, we've set the transparent background in the viewport. So if this pixel is transparent, we are going to return the transparency. And if it's not transparent, so if there is an object, we are going to fill it with white color just to see if it works. And let's see if it works. Almost works. As you can see, uh, there is something here, but uh, we forgot to align the cameras. And whenever you work with this method, with the one camera generating an actual picture and the other one creating an outline, you are going to have to align them. So let's do it here. Uh, the viewport camera transform uh, is going to be equal to camera transform. And let's see if this works yeah so now the cameras are aligned and now you can see that the, the whole geometry is filled with a single color which is not exactly what we want but we, are, we can see that there is an object so if, for example now i turn off this layer two you can see that there is nothing here and if i turn it on again yeah so the shader reacts to this object so the only thing that we need to know is like leave this inside transparent but and make a frame around it so we are going to do it like this if the pixel is transparent we are going to check if there are other pixels around it that are not transparent and in that case this is going to be part of the outline so first let's create a frame as a vector vector 2 which is going to be equal to pixel size multiplied by width and then we are going to make two for loops so uh, browsing the texture uh, in x and y axis so first we're going to use the axis uh, the x axis so uh, it will be equal to fr minus frame dot x uh, x is small or I'll equal to frame x and x plus equal pixel size x and the same basically goes for uh, y axis so coordinate y is going to be equal frame my frame uh, y coordinate uh, smaller than frame y and we are going to increment it by pixel size y and uh, so this these two loops are going to check an area around a given pixel uh, looking for other pixels and if that other pixel is non-transparent that means this is part of the frame so Let's create this new pixel. Let's read it actually. Uh, is texture uh, from the original texture, but UV plus back to XY. Sorry, uh, XY. So this is the coordinates of the new pixel that is around our current pixel. And if new pixel alpha is 
not equal to 0, 0, which means there is an object here, then we will return a color, which is the color, if you assume, remember, this is the color of the frame that we configured. And uh, we don't need an else, to be honest, because this is a method. So if we go here and uh, we, uh, we return the color, the execution of the method will end. And as a default, we are going to return not a white color, but a completely transparent color. So if we encounter a pixel that in its surrounding uh, has a pixel that is not transparent, we are going to call it a frame. This is going to be the part of the frame and otherwise it's going to be transparent entirely. And let's see. And this is basically the entire shader here. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so 27 lines of code. And it is not working because we have not configured the parameters of this shader, which are here. So let's uh, use a nice color and let's add some width. And you can see now that the object is uh, surrounded by a nice color. And I can also change the color here. I can change the width, make it like super thick, but it's applied equally around the whole object. And I could also go here. Uh, and I can rotate this object. Oh, actually, that I, I rotated the entire scene. Sorry, I will rotate this object. And you can see that the frame nicely follows, the outline nicely follows. Uh, so yeah, this can be used in like adventure games uh, to make, uh, to highlight objects that you can interact with or in strategy games that you, when, where you want to highlight um, units on the map and I'm sure in, any, uh, in many other places. All right, and now I would like to show you a portal effect. So in Godot, I have a simple scene with two rooms and um, each, one, each room has an object, uh, but it's a different object, they use different colors. Both of them have a camera and a light source, but this first room has an additional uh, polygon that I would like to use to see what's going on in this other object. But like, so this, this will be the place where we apply the portal effect. So let's start with this polygon that, and I'm going to uh, create a new material for it. A uh, special material will do just fine. I'm going to make it transparent and unshaded. And I'm going to set the color to something like really uh, unusual so that it will not be often used in this game that we in, in other scenes that because this color will be later replaced uh, by a texture from like the, from the view from the camera from another room. So that's step number one. And step number two will be to create an overlay or a screen and I'm going to use a panel for this. I'm going to scale it uh, to cover the entire screen. And this panel is going to use a shader that is going to put the, uh, this, this portal, to, to create this portal effect where this item is, this object is. Uh, so in the shader, I'm going to create a shader material with a new shader. And this is going to be a canvas item type, shader type canvas item. And let's define a fragment uh, shader. And let's just, uh, in this shader, I would like to show you how to use a screen texture. So shaders in Godot have access to screen texture, which represents the image that would be shown in the screen uh, and I'm going to use it here. I'm going to read a pixel of this uh, of this uh, screen uh, texture. Screen texture and screen UV instead of using normal UV you use screen UV. So basically this shader what it does is it will display this, the original picture on the screen. And as I run this, well, you can see that it didn't work exactly. Ah, right, because I didn't assign the color. So color equals pixel, sorry. And yeah, so now you can see basically the original image that you would see from the first scanner, the camera in room one. But now we can apply some effects in between. So for example, I would like to check if this pixel is 
pink and if yes i would like to change its color now because of some floating point precision uh, errors i cannot check directly if the the color is has this and uh, or other value so i'm going to uh, get close enough to it so if pixel red is not equal one but is greater or equal 0 0.99 also oh, it's actually red red yes and um pixel green is very small and the pixel blue is also very big just like red that means that this is probably the pink pixel and i'm going to apply uh, uh, i'm going to use a color that is uh, let's say white because it's easy to create it and otherwise i'm going to use the original pixel so i'm going to take this into result let's see how it works so you can see that this shader correctly detected the portal object because it had a very specific color and, and then replaced this color with another which means that the shader correctly detects where the portal is but well we are now operating on on colors so let's use textures instead i'm going to create a shader param here And this text param is going to be set to a texture that looks like this, which is just a screenshot I took some time ago, but we are going to, we are going to just use it as an example. So here I'm going to load it. And then here, where we detect that this is, this pixel is pink. Uh, so we, instead of setting the color to white, we are going to set it to a pixel red from this texture param. So, uh, read from text but at screen uv so we are still going to use the uv of the screen and as a result you can see that yay this this portal object now displays a different texture which are not just a single color which brings us one step closer to our goal uh, but the goal is to show things that are in this other room so things seen by this other camera and we are going to achieve that by using a viewport so let's create a viewport Let's move this camera to this viewport and let's set some size to this viewport, otherwise nothing will get rendered. And uh, one more thing that you need to change in the viewport settings is there's this render target section and update mode always visible. You need to change it to always because this viewport is not really shown anywhere. It's just pass, will be passed as a, tech, uh, as a shader param and Godot will not detect it as visible and therefore it will not update it. So if you don't change it to always, you are going to end up with a white uh, texture or like a gray texture. And then let's assign one to another. So let's go to, let's create a script for this and uh, panel material set shader param. The param is text and the value is going to be viewport get texture. And uh, let's see if this works. Yep. It does. So this is a picture seen from a, the camera in the other room. You can see that I've missed aligned cameras on purpose to show that this, these walls are not uh, aligned. They, they don't have to be aligned. This room has, can have different dimensions. The camera can be in a different uh, place and so on. So this is uh, this is how you, you can show a picture from one, one camera into another. And let's add a bit of interaction to, to show that this this will work when we are moving. Well, implementing moving itself would be a bit difficult, but let's add at least um, rotation of camera. So if uh, let's create an input method and if event is input mouse motion, then uh, the, this camera in room one, room one camera rotation degrees uh, Y will be incremented by event relative uh, X. And uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, and this will work best if we set mouse mode to captured. So let's try it now. And you can see that now I can turn around in this first room, but the tech, there's something wrong with the texture in the other room. And that's because uh, we're, the texture is basically, the, ca the camera is not moving. The other camera is not moving. So it constantly generates the same picture and we are always reading the same picture. 
and that brings us to a point that whenever you try to do like synchronize object uh, uh, images from different cameras you also need to synchronize those cameras uh, so for this simple example room two camera rotation degrees is going to be set to the same values uh, the same value as room one camera rotation degrees and now if i run this example you can see that yeah this this other room also rotates because now whenever we rotate the camera in room one the camera in room two also uh, is rotated and if you ever want to make this into a real game you will also need to synchronize the location of the camera assuming that you can walk around and if you want to implement walking through a portal you will have to make sure you will have to detect that moment when the, the character walks through a portal and then switch cameras to the uh, so that the, the main camera is the one in the other room uh, but yeah all this can be done and this is just uh, this is a very, very simple example of how you can show uh, a portal in your game i hope it will be useful for you right these are all the examples that i wanted to show you today thank you very much for your attention and if you have any questions i would be very happy to answer them in the QAN section. Thanks!